Hi everyone and welcome back to Howie Handle HD and you'll notice uh, there's a slight change in the background that is just because I am in a hotel room so I am on holiday and yeah also I'm filming from a different laptop so if everything seems a little bit strange or, or does seem a little bit off that is just the reason why so apologies for that. Today I wanted to look at um, Samurai Champ, I think it's like Champloo, I think that's how you pronounce it or Champaloo. Um, this is one of these ones where I was going to eventually get around to it at some point, uh, just because um, it's it's kind of just like a, a continuation of all the anime that I like from that sort of era. Uh, you know, things like I've already spoke about, uh, most recently Black Lagoon, uh, Nana is another one, Death Note, um, just, just anything sort of I mean, early 2000s, 2012, like, that sort of art style, yeah, it's probably my favourite era. Um, yeah, so today I just thought I'd dive in with uh, with Samurai Champloo. Um, what I really was, what I really thought was quite unique about this anime was that the the pacing of it was was pretty you know, it was very secular, like to one episode they were on an adventure, then it was finished, second episode they were on an adventure, then it was finished. It was it was didn't really the plots that they did some some episodes that have like part one, part two, and so on, but most of the time it was just uh, the case of something happened, and then they got around to fixing it, and then they just moved on, which I really thought was quite nice. It wasn't really there wasn't really too many things that sort of dragged on through the episodes, uh, kind of uh, kind of similar to Black and Good in that regard. Um, my favorite character personally uh, was Jin. Uh, I just really liked Jin. He was so cool uh, to me. Um, his sort of classical way of fighting and so on, and his constant arguments with Mugen, um, and to a lesser extent, Fu. Uh, the story behind, you know, like the whole the whole reason why how it came to be, was simple, but it was also very, uh, like necessarily simple. Like there was no ultimate backstory. Like they didn't know each other beforehand. It was just a case of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. And um, Mugen's sort of uh, respect you know he went into Fu's restaurant for some dumplings uh, you know and it all kicks off uh, with the th this governor's son and then at the same time at the other end of the city or wherever Jen is trying to fight for the people um, against the governor so it's it's you know co purely coincidental and then they meet Mugen thinks that Jen's an agent of the governor's son and Jen just thinks that Mugen's just a wee a wee tool rag who needs to be put in his place and then an epic battle ensues and I think what I think is really cool about uh, Samurai Champloo is they don't they don't sort of make it a make it a thing where like these guys will be beaten by anyone in a sword fight like you are you are you just know that these guys are going to be the guys who are going to just be so good at fighting that they're never going to get beat off anyone so the fact that they sort of come to blows and there's a stalemate and that's sort of what kicks the story on between the two, and then of course Fu's um, sort of her quest to find the sum samurai who smells like sunflowers, and using pretty much using uh, at the beginning um, them to his sort of protection uh, on the road while they try and find this find this guy purely because um, she does a coin toss that we you know we later uh, we later find out is a bit. Uh, ambiguous but yeah it's uh, yeah it was just it's so it's such a nice little thing to sit down and watch um i originally watched the dub version the you know the sub version sorry and then i actually watched the dub version and i preferred the dub version to the sub version because it's it's so easy to when it's in japanese just to read the subtitles and then miss a lot of what's going on to miss a lot of the action but with the uh, with obviously with it dubbed you get a bit more of a it feels more personal, obviously, because it's in English. I mean, I'm assuming that's what a lot of people who watch it in Japanese would say. They feel better watching it, obviously, in Japanese because of that reason. Um, visually, it's just good for its era. Uh, it holds up really well. Um, the music, the soundtrack's really cool. Another good thing, as I said before, it was very unique. The um, the blend between modern and, of course, the Edo period. We've got like a mixture of both. Um, I really, I just really liked that. It was, it was really interesting and, and really on point, uh, with like you know the, the sort of hip hop grooves and also 
Mugen style of fighting. Uh, of course, this uh, break break dancing, free, like you know, like almost like a freestyle. Whereas Jin's very classical swordsman, very honourable. Like he wouldn't throw dirt in somebody's face in a fight. Whereas Ju like Mugen would do that. Um, and I really like that that showcased the characters. Um, uh, there. So yeah, just wanted to do a little brief uh, brain dump. I'm gonna do these rather than you know, sit and do, like, proper, like, reviews, because I think that's, I think it's just a, I, it, this just works easier for my brain, like, I'm, I'm just, I'm just happy to talk about it, and if you've seen it, then you're going to watch this, if not, then you're not, that's why, that's why I call them my thoughts instead of reviews, uh, you know, that way I don't have to worry about talking about spoilers, although I don't really try to spoil anything, it's, it's a very good anime, and if you haven't watched it, I suggest you do, it's very simple and easy, and, and really, you know, easy to follow, um, favourite character, Jin, most favorite, uh, probably Fu. I don't. It's not. That I don't hate Mugen. It's just that, like, I just like Fu, Fu's sort of uh, shenanigans. Uh, I really like her uh, little squirrel pal that she's got. Um, I can't. I can't actually remember what that squirrel's called. But like the little flying squirrel that she takes everywhere with her. Um, and yeah. So overall, really great show. Really nice to watch. And if you are a newcomer, it's definitely something to to get started with. Um, and I'll give this, oh also some does a little uh, bit of fourth wall breaking as well, I forgot to mention, I really like the, uh, like, the, the the narration will come up and say like, you thought we were done, psych, or something like that, or like, to be continued, obviously, <laughs> things like that, just a little, little comedic little references there, and uh, the, you know, the, just, just the sort of, the character development as well, although like I say, like I said at the start, it wasn't really, it didn't feel like it was episode by episode we were sort of growing a lot. It was sort of episode by episode. Things remained the same, but, you know, we got to a different location or there was a different thing happening. But there were signs of character development, don't get me wrong. And I really think that um, was a nice sort of little trope that they had with it as well. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that one. And I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.